Love Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of The Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of The Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. Our theme is taking a bite out of the competition is our slogan. So to begin with, today's topic is going to be asset-based lending. And the old adage, everybody asks, what is asset-based lending? In a nutshell, is lending on the value of the asset that you're putting up for collateral. Meaning that if I have a piece of property that is worth 100000 that's what I'm going to use as assets as an asset in order to collateralize the loan. wrote an article about a month ago, a small paper, white paper, is called Asset-Based Lending Enjoying the Renaissance. If we go back through history, we always had a way of trading commerce. And the way that business grew two or three and years ago, two or three hundred years ago, is through factoring. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Factoring, equipment, I'm just going to keep it those three things in real estate. Then we'll go into great details in future episodes about asset-based lending. But to kind of keep it in a nutshell, let's talk about factoring. Factoring is really taking your invoices or your your receivables and pledging them for collateral in order to get an advancement. So I'm not going to make this really confusing, but let's start with factoring. And in a nutshell, for factoring. Invoice factoring, accounts receivables are really much the same. Factoring fade are an effective way to secure small business financing without the debt of small business loan. As we factor our company, we mean we're taking our receivables, we allow us to make payroll, allow us to pay bills, keep the lights on and so forth, is an oldest form of financing and is one that a lot of companies really don't look at. A lot of large companies are aware of it. But a lot of companies don't understand, if I'm a small business or I'm a small contractor, and I do business-to-business transactions, I should look at factoring as a way to, in order to grow my company. And you should build this part of your cost. Don't look at it as a negative. I'm giving maybe 3 to 5% away. Put that 3 to 5% part of your cost of doing business, and then do your margins from there. So if you have a 50%, either increase it to 55% or budget your amount for 45. Now, if you have small margins, it becomes a little bit more difficult unless you have high volume. Let me repeat that. If you have small margins, like 10% is tiny. I mean, you've got to be a really streamlined organization. It's possible you can make it, but you're going to have to have a lot of volume in order to pay your bill. You just won't make a whole lot of money with small margins. But if you keep your overhead low, if you keep everything in check, you'll be able to if your margins are 10%, you probably can do it, but you need to be this margin. You need to be careful on your volume. You need to really increase your volume, just run things through. I have a act out of with an Air Force base, and what I ask my team to do, I want you to call these Air Force bases on a regular basis. I want you to get everything that HP offers. You know, give me your toner, give me this and that, because they can make small purchases. But what I've done is I asked them to go on base, meet with the, the the contract officer, and ask them permission, hey, I want to get everything I can get. Give me you know, a toner, give me this, give me that, give me your printers, give me your copiers. You, know, you try to get as much business as you can. So if you have one Air Force base who's giving you $100,000 in a year of business, then they increase more, and then go to another base and get another one, and just go down the line. You have hundreds of Air Force bases throughout the country, military bases in particular. And if they only give you 10000 or $15,000 a year, those costs add up. I mean, those revenue add up, and it makes it more practical for you to do, if they give you an order, it's practical for you to do that particular order because you have the volume. 
So to kind of focus on the volume if you have small margins. So if we look at factoring itself, factoring in two ways. You have a purchase order, you have a receivable. Most people know about the receivable. A lot of people don't know about the purchase order and the inventory finance. So let me talk about the benefits of this factoring as a whole. Full service non cool recourse factoring, this means that if your person that you factor an account defaults, you're not on the line for it. The factoring company would take that liability because they're underwriting that particular company credit risk, not your company. There's usually no PGs involved and you don't have the person guarantee. They are factoring this account on the basis of the credit worthiness of that particular business, your client. They're looking at your whole portfolio, what type of risk portfolio you have. If you have government, they know they're going to get paid. If you have commercial, they know they're going to get paid. Now, if it's a huge company like Walmart, they know they're going to get paid. So sometimes larger business pay slower. However, they're going to pay their bills regardless if they give you a purchase order. So it's just the nature of the beast. So if, for example, if your company, if I am ABC supplier, I'm going to supply parts to the dealership, okay? So I'm ABC supplier. I sell auto parts to the dealership. They're going to call me. I'm a, they're going to give me a purchase order, a purchase request, and then I will invoice them with the product. And again, you want to invoice not a couple of days. You want to invoice when that product goes out because the clock start ticking so you can get paid. So once that invoice is generated, they come and pick up the, the item or you ship it. Sometimes some people will email the invoices. It's en route. But once they receive it is when the clock starts. So you can either, once that time happens, you can send out to the factoring company. The factoring company will advance you up to 90% of that invoice. And that's cash in your pocket. you would be able to make your payroll and your expenses, pay your supplier if need be, if you have those margins going on there. And at the very end, however, the invoice don't belong to you anymore. It actually belongs to the factoring company. The factoring company will set up a lockbox account. So when that invoice at the bottom of the invoice is, has a lockbox to be paid. So once that vendor pays the invoice that goes into that lockbox, the money is taken out immediately. The fees are taken out immediately. And then they will send you the difference. So let me talk about that again. If your invoice is $100, okay, and you invoice the dealership, whatever dealership it is, your ABC, you're going to invoice D is the dealership D. And once you send the product, they receive the product. You already have the invoice already generated because you already shipped it. So when they receive it, then the, you want to say the clock start ticking. Okay. So when they get the invoice, uh, what they're going to do is at in 30 days, they're going to pay that invoice. The payment will still go to you, but you're not going to go to your physical business. It's going to go to a lockbox that the bank controls, the factoring company controls since they own that invoice. And the D company will pay that particular invoice and they're going to deduct the fee amount that's owed to them. So if they owe 3%, they're going to take their 3% fee off, which is $3. And then they're going to pay themselves back because they already advanced you 90%. Okay. And you would get the difference. That's, is that simple? You would get the difference. So they're going to take their fee. So they already, first of all, you have a hundred dollar invoice. Let's say they pay you $90 off of it. Okay. You paid your supplier off. Boom. Then they take their fee out and say $3. Boom. They're sending you the difference of $7. Is that simple? Okay. However, if you don't have the money to pay the supplier for that to get it to you, to get it to the other person, then there's another fact, me, a way you can factor is called purchase order financing. Then they want to take a look at everybody, look at you a little bit more closely. They look at the person you're selling it to. And what they, what happens is they set up a credit line with your supplier. So your supplier is General Motors. Say so General Motors, we're going to give you a lot of credit that in you, we're going to promise to pay. And here's our official bank letter of credit. If you don't get paid, we will pay it. So the way it works is this. They give the uh, General Motors, for example, the letter of credit. General Motors will set the account up for you and them. ABC company and the factoring company. And 
we the factoring company promised to pay if they didn't get paid. So what's going to really happen is this, okay? Uh, sometime, you know, it's going to be maybe a 2% fee you need to be added on the purchase order in because that's a more liability when it comes to a purchase order because we've got to make sure it gets to the customer at the very end in order for that to work. So let's say it's a 2% fee. They can range from 0.25 to as high as 5%, depends on what the risk is and who's the end result, who's receiving it, and your company. If you're pretty stable, you pay less. So General Motors, they will send you this part for this 2013 Buick, okay? Say 213 Buick. Let's say it's an alternator, okay? So they're going to send the alternator to you and you, AB, AB supply company, and then you're going to send it to your customer, which is the D company, the dealership. So let me play it again. Let's go from A. A is General Motors. They issue a purchase order to them. You issue a purchase order to them. They have the letter of credit that's to secure the payment. Once they ship the item to you, the clock starts. Okay. Once you receive it, the clock stops. Okay. Then when you receive it, and this two percent for thirty days, probably. Okay. The clock starts. So you pay whatever that prorated fee is percentage to it gets to you. So when ha- when it gets to you, then the factoring company pays that invoice. Okay. Then. Okay, they pay General Motors. General Motors happy. They got paid quick. Then from you, then you're going to invoice the the dealership. And when you invoice the dealership, then you're going to send that invoice to the factoring company. And the factoring company will pay you. So this is how it would pay. The factoring company, since they would know what your margins are, they'll pay General Motors first. Then number two, they'll pay you the difference second. Then what's left over is is the ba- final balance of that margin. So if you purchase order finance and if you go and look at your accounts receivable finance, they're going to pay whatever that prorated amount is. Let's say it's 2%. Okay. 2% fee will come out of the top and then they will advance the payment of the, say, is $90. So $2 already came out. Let's say it's just even $2. Okay. So they're going to pay you for example, $90 on this $100 invoice. They're going to take their 2% out. Okay, that's $2. So it's $80, $88 balance. So say that your profit margin is 20, let's say your profit margin is going to be $40. Okay, so they pay, the cost of that product is $40. They're going to pay General Motors right away for the $40. So now they already took their 2% out. Now you got your $38, okay? If you're with me, your product costs $40. They pay General Motors off the other picture. Your suppliers pay. Then they're going to give you $38 because they took the 2% off, okay? And they still have the invoice for $400 from the other person, number C. So once the other person get paid, if you're looking at it, the $100, then they're going to take their 3%, say their 3% out. Okay, and then you get the difference. So now you got thirty-eight dollars, and then you get the additional seven dollars. Okay, so you still come out the same way. Your profit margin is forty-five dollars. Boom, there. That's what you have. Okay, so that's the whole scenario. And your company now made forty-five dollars off that one widget. That's how factoring works. That's how the purchase order works. That's how the invoice factoring or the cash receivable works. That's how that system works when it comes to factoring. So again. Purchase order would pay the supplier who is your vendor that you need to buy the materials from. Then you as the, as the client will have a client that you need to sell something to. So what they happen is they would pay the, your supplier off so you can get the product. You got the product. Now you're going to ship the product to your customer and then they're going to pay you the difference. And once the invoice pays at the very end, the whole cycle, in 30 days, they're going to deduct a little small fee out, and then you get the difference. So you still be able to cash flow. If you do this in volume, you're fine. If you do this, pretty much this will keep you afloat. You don't have to worry about nothing getting cut off. You just have to budget yourself. These are your true margins, and you're getting paid right away. So that pretty much is all about factoring. Okay. Let's talk about 
The next one is the difference of an asset-based loan as of equipment. You can get an asset-based loan. You don't have to, you might be asked to personal guarantee it if your credit is shaky for your business or your personal credit. If you have good credit, you might not be asked to because you're a good credit risk. They, you show that you have the ability of paying your bills on time. So if that's the case, let's say you have a piece of real estate or you say you have some heavy machinery equipment and you want to get a $100,000 loan. Okay. Your real estate is worth 200000 your equipment is worth 300000 okay? So you have $500,000 in assets. Let's say that the bank is comfortable giving you 50% of that amount. They say, okay, we can give you up to $250,000. Your assets shown as appraisal, you say it's worth 500000 Our appraisal report says it's 400 and something. We're compromised. We'll give you a line of credit in your pocket for $250,000. Mine is a one origination fee, okay? Sometimes it is origination fee involved for underwriting and appraisals and paperwork. Sometimes it's not. It just really depends. So you got $250,000. But however, they have control. They really have control of it, but they own the asset. And you are leasing it back to them. They're going to structure as a payment for a lease, either pay monthly, pay quarterly. But is your property... You just refinancing the whole thing and you get the cash back. The rates are typically a little bit higher than bank rates, but the bank is going to want everything that you own. If you default, that's what you're paying for because since they have everything, they have your home, they have every asset to you in their hand in the case of your default. So they take everything. If it's a government back loan like an SBA, the government has an obligation to take everything plus your tax return. So it's yes, you can get the better rate. However, they take more. So if it's an SBA loan, they take your tax return and they will file a lien on your account. They can file a lien on your home on the SBA loan. Okay. A bank account can file a lien on your home, but it can take your assets as well. However, they can't take your tax return. This system of asset based lending is a little different. They will only take the equipment that is pledged as collateral. If you sometimes you have to co sign it, if you have shaking credit, sometimes you don't. So it really depends where you are on that. So you can get your two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan, pay it back, and then you can build from there. So those are the two basic ones that I want to talk about. Right then we're gonna take a station break real quick and come back and wrap everything up. And here is advertisement from our sponsor, Apple Capital Group. Be back in one moment. You're listening to the Core Business Show. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to the core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. Well, welcome back again. Again, let's talk about, I'm going to put a paper out on our website, which is blog.applecapitalgroup. And again, it's called, the paper is called Asset-Based Lending, Enjoying the Renaissance. And again, it's just a short paper, a white paper I wrote by a couple of months ago. And it talks about how asset-based lending is enjoying the renaissance, that from this renaissance, tells you, you know, talk about major companies from Gulf, from Hertz, from Sears, Neiman Marcus, Liz Claiborne, all use factoring. So kind of keep that in mind. It's not a ugly word. It is something that we still use in business today. It's also known as ABL. So you can do two things. You can either factor your, you can do a lease sell back, and that will sustain you if you don't have a lot of business credit. Again, purchase order, look at purchase order financing, look at accounts receivable financing, look at lease sell backs. And that is really the essence of financing with asset based lending. I'm going to post this to the website at 
blog.applecapitalgroup. Everybody, thank you for listening to the program today. And uh, check out that paper called Asset-Based Lending and Join the Renaissance. And if you have any questions on factoring, please give me a call. I'd be more than happy to help you. My number is 866-611-7457. It's Tim J.K., the host of the Core Business Show. Thank you all for listening. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.